previously on The Amazing Incredible Professional Adventures of Gamma. How, how big is Thad's head now? It's about the same size. It's it's very, um, it's, it's slightly bulbous at the top. Greetings, Omen. I am Jarl Conehead. The two Omen guards immediately grab you and put you in handcuffs. <laughs> in front of you, you can see tracking stations that seem to be tracking the origin of what looks like a set of red dots moving towards Cairo. The lightning from the storm that Millard created lights up the sky and you can see hundreds of little black things in the sky. Dad, will you wave this at the bat people? I grab the sistrum and uh, I just start to... uh, You shake it. I start to shake it. It looks like in the scuffle when the uh, Omen agents grabbed you, they broke it slightly. We done broke our MacGuffin. (laughs) Yeah, broke your MacGuffin. (laughs) It is a bloodbath down there. Both the people and the um, vampires are all dying in equal amounts. I'm doing like a little fun stick, but I'm also um, evacuating immediately. Let's get this party started. Crack open the champagne. Stop. Gamma time. Three of you manage to put some distance between you and the base and you hear another set of the missiles exploding around it and it is utterly horrible. I guess the three of you want to get away from here as far as you can? I mean, if we have a place we could kind of watch and see if they find, looks like they might find what they're looking for, but I'm not too keen to stay close to it, no. So you guys make your way over to the Gizan Necropolis, which um, is quite close to um, where this omen base is. Uh, and on the other side of you, you can see like the Sphinx nearby. Uh, and you look out over the omen base and you watch as the carnage continues and the guns eventually go silent. Ooh, that's never good. Yeah. And the swarm then takes to the air again. And you watch as to the um, west, another set of swarms come in from the sky above. Uh, And these swarms are carrying what looked like these enormous vats of something um, in their arms. And you see a really, really big one as well nearby. They're hovering their way over towards Cairo right now. (sighs) Fuck y'all, I didn't want to have to do this. So I reach into my prop bag, I get out a nice long brown duster and my Hugh Jackman wig from the movie Van Helsing. (laughs) (laughs) okay all right i got a 23 on creativity you look just like him. you're a spitting image of hugh jackman right now genuinely impressive you've just got that allure of hugh jackman right now how did he make it how did he make himself shorter is my question that's insane (laughs) that's That's acting really he's really he's a really good actor uh very talented that and his skin is kind of pliable at the minute so mm. he, he's a little bit able to move up oh. and down in height the wig hides the fleshy head yeah we should con- should we contact our base and warn them and ask them what to do sure thing ask our boss i mean yeah you pick up your phone and then you ring peyton hey what's what's going on i'm i'm, I'm away i've i've just picked up a helicopter and i'm i'm, I'm away i'll be there in about an hour or two there's a huge swarm in the sky of uh, we believe vampires like thousands of them it's a bad situation in cairo jeez okay it does look like a, like almost like what you could call all of the vampires even without really being too extreme yeah it's a lot like those uh the 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 hieroglyphs we saw down down in the uh, tombs that we sent to you also it seems very weird that we we saw those and then they appeared now. You believe in coincidences? I never believe in coincidences. All right, well I'm not gonna tell you, tell you what Tom Cruise used to tell time. me on the set of Mission Impossible Seven. No, no, we're so, Mr. Steele. Yeah, it's called Mission Impossible Seven Improbable. <laughs> I, can I turn the camera on the phone, assuming it's a pretty high-tech phone, to where he can see the sky? You turn it around, and he sees the sky, and he's like, "Oh my god, that that is a that is definitely more vampires than that were here." Uh, she must be mobilizing 
all the different vampire clans. Uh, I'm going to need you guys to either get to some sort of safe distance or contain it somehow. Um, well, I am uh, Van Helsing, so I'm definitely uh, ready to kill this fucking vampire you, queen. You do look like Van Helsing right now. How, how have you gotten shorter? Uh, I'm sorry. Acting! Yeah. <laughs> Acting talent! Genuinely impressive. Well, as a leader, you are remarkably great mm. at giving us a breadth of options, such as go face the monster or don't. Well, I mean, like... I'm ready to kill it. I would recommend that you guys get to our nearest listening post and you get hold of one of our tactical nukes. That's probably the only way we're going to get rid of these guys. Sir, are you sure that's necessary? The tactical nukes run up to nearly $20,000 a piece. That is just yeah, but Cairo and all the people in it are probably more worth more than that. But aren't we going to kill them if we tactically nuke this place? We don't have to ensure the people of Cairo. They, I'm sure, have <laughs> something to take care of that. No, it, so I'm sorry, sir. That's, that's, we'll talk about that later. We will head to the listening post. What I want you to do is go get the tactical nuke. I'm going to need you to take it somewhere out into the desert. I'm going to need you to lure the vampires there, and I'm going to need you to get there and also stop them. Well, pretty much the vampires hear that Van Helsing is back in town. They're going to come flocking, so we just got to start spreading <laughs> the word that I'm around. All right, I'll uh, start working on the social media posts for yeah, that. I'm gonna start, yeah, I'll, I'm going to send him some good <laughs> images uh, showing that I'm in Cairo, and then I'm going to go ahead and then look up um, uh, a location in the desert where we want to like set ourselves up at. And then, mm -hmm. so I'm going to send in the images, some in Cairo. I'm going to tell them to uh, use the game of a computer to kind of um, post these, but predate them to make it look like Van Helsing's been hanging out in Cairo for the last couple of days. So we have a good digital trail of me being there. And then I'm going to send yep. some pictures with more of a desert background. So it's kind of... Um, it's it's open to interpretation where I am, and then I want to send okay. it to the social media team so they could doctor all these up, and then I want to put that I'm having a Van Helsing uh, party because I'm retiring from killing vampires, but I'm doing it in the desert. All right, that sounds fine. So um, I, I say that <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. Um, uh, you take some headshots, and then you, you send them over to the. I got, 21 mm -hmm. for, I got 21 for the creativity of all of my headshots and everything. Damn, okay, so you take some pretty impressive headshots. They are, they're smoldering. Yeah. They're smoldering. Hugh Jackman sees it, and he's like, what the fuck am I doing in Egypt right now? <laughs> they spread like wildfire across social media. It's genuinely quite impressive how quickly it spreads. But that is, that is the world we live in today. People want more Hugh Jackman. I mean, they love it. They love that Van Helsing. I would say that uh, this will eventually make its way to the attention of the vampire queen queen um because her family um her sort of like brood and her dynasty have had run-ins with the H van helsing family in the past um the real van helsing family and the idea of there being an actual which genuine huge van ja helsing, hugh jackman is actually a secret member which is what's crazy <laughs> absolutely yeah no i wouldn't have it any other way um and the movie was a documentary it was shot in real time it's, an actu it's, a, it's a documentary it's not a film and <laughs> Please go on. Joel's just over um, here dying. You're gonna guess hand me to death. The <laughs> three of you make your way to the nearest listening post, and halfway there, you can see like the pyramids in the background now. You watch as the vampires hover over the sort of westmost part of Giza, and they release the canisters that they are holding underneath them. I'm getting Further reports that a red gas has been dispensed across the entire western half of the city. Um, uh, it, it now appears to be uh, some kind of, of terrorist attack ac across half the, half the city. Obviously, this is uh, a dark time for the citizens of Cairo and... Our hearts are with you in these in these trying times. Uh, no terrorist organizations have yet stepped forward to to claim responsibility for this attack, but we, we expect to to hear from them shortly. Again, there are drones that have been. You watch as this sort of red mist pours all over the west side of Cairo. Oh, this sucks. Shortly afterwards, you start to feel like this crackling feeling on the back of your neck. Oh. 
this very weird feeling that you've dealt with before on your past adventures whenever there are sort of ghosts around and soul energy you notice that the lights on the west side of Giza are starting to go out like hundreds of lights just turning out very quickly one after the other and the ground shakes quite considerably what do you want to do leave <laughs> I mean, aren't we supposed to be taking the nuke to, uh, to the, to the... I mean, it looks like they do all seem to have collected somewhere already conveniently for us. I just don't like there's a giant wall of red mist between us and them. I'd say that you guys are still on your way towards the, um, listening post and eventually you get there and you open the doors and there are two people sitting inside manning some machinery, like listening in on stuff. And they turn around and they sort of wave at you. Hayden said you were coming. What, what's going on out there? Whew, uh, there's a lot of vampires. There's a lot of red mist. There's a vampire queen. It's uh, really bad. We're going to try to nuke them. Nuke them? Uh, we, uh, we were asked to pick up a piece of ordnance, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, which which, uh, which uh, piece of ordnance is that? What's the uh, code word for it? I believe the expression he used was tactical nuke. Oh, okay. No, sure. No, I understand. It's a lot of paperwork. We'll get started with that now. All right. Can you please roll for creativity? Ten? Uh, I say that you, you blitz through that paperwork reasonably easy with the power of the demon inside you. <laughs> Devil's in the details. They then hand over the tactical nuke to you, and they say, don't go using it all in one place, okay? Isn't it just kind of like a one-shot, though? Hey, they, it's an expression. We, got, we don't have time for that. So is the red wall of mist between us and where we need to get for the the Van Helsing retirement party, or is it just surrounding the city? The entire west side of the city is now covered in this red mist, and as soon as you go outside, you see them collecting and hovering over the Great Pyramid of Giza. Further reports coming in that there are thousands of these drones over Cairo. They, that they've gathered together, and they appear to be landing on one of the great pyramids great pyramids of course one of the seven wonders of the ancient world uh, some of these drones appear to be very complicated uh, with with very high tech equipment on board again we still haven't got any confirmation from any uh, particular country where these drones might have come from uh, we were getting no organizations claiming responsibility for, for these attacks. But it seems that they are now targeting the, the, the Great Pyramids of Giza here in Cairo. I mean, we do a lot of creepy shit around here, but that is damn ominous. The pyramid itself is now kind of black with all these insectoid creatures climbing all over it. You think there's something they want in there? Possibly. Should we nuke the pyramid? <laughs> I'm not saying let's not nuke the pyramid, although, again, we will have to pay a lot to reconstruct the pyramid. Let's say Omen did it. Here, and then I pull out a Sharpie and I write Omen on the side of the nuke. <laughs> you are really good at this. <laughs> this is amazing. Roll for creativity. I got a 22. Oh, my God. You write on the side of this nuke Omen uh, in such a way that if this nuke were to explode and the shrapnel were to be found, it would look like it was an Omen-branded nuke. <laughs> <laughs> he is really talented. I am starting to understand how he how he does this. Yeah, so let's just go fucking nuke that pyramid. All right. Um, Rose doesn't care if that seems like the best option. I right. don't like how I got, expensive it is, I got but this is already going to be I a got, kind of a I big campaign. I got an campaign. idea of how to distract if you guys can get. Sure. Anything to not have the vampires pointing directly at me i'm all right so i am gonna change into <laughs> i'm gonna change into some robes to look like joel has like 900 imdb tabs up right now i do have a bunch of them open i, I keep looking genuinely through. impressive uh, i'm i'm changing into robes to look like charlton heston from the movie 10 commandments nice as i'm gonna walk right. up and I got that i got like a fucking staff and i scream let my people go and i'm gonna try to part the red mist but it's like Red Seas, get it? Like Bible ship. No, we, yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to act very hard like I'm doing this. And also, I'm just acting. I'm not trying to use focus in this. So I, you do whatever you want with this role. So All gonna, right, roll for creativity. I got a 19. Do you also want me to roll luck? Uh, yeah. I got a 13 luck. So 19 creativity, 13 luck. Simultaneously, uh, 
uh, Miller rolls a, pulls a 17 focus actually trying to do it <laughs> just to kind of fuck with that. Okay. Thad, you open your arms with the staff and you yell. What do you yell, sir? <laughs> Screw it. Let my people go. Wait, what's what was what Charles Heston? Yeah, no, you're did right. Did he get? What, I'm, that, tr well, I'm trying the, to remember. Charles Heston. Did he get real weirdly racist? Or which one was? Yeah, he no, he was NRA, and was, but which really? is also that. Yeah, no, he Jeez. Charles Heston. Okay, is he dead now? Yeah, we pried the gun from his I'm cold dead think, hands. I'm thinking about. I'm I, I'm getting him confused with the other old racist man from Gran Torino. Oh, you're thinking of um Clint the um, uh, Clint Eastwood. There you go. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I walk up, and instead of a staff, it is an assault rifle. Um, <laughs> actually, no, I'm sorry. It's two assault rifles taped together to be as tall as the staff. And I slam nice. it down, and I scream, Let my people go and give everyone a fucking gun, you pansies! And gum is too soft now. <laughs> I don't think you understand what old people complaints are. It's not that food is too soft. No, he's trying to say that he, he likes old hard gum, and people are soft now because they need chewy gum. Back in my day, we just fucking ate rocks, and we called it gum. <laughs> I'm screaming all of this. <laughs> You're screaming all of this, and at the same time, from behind you, a jet of water is sprayed in such a way where it sort of, like, starts to clear up this red mist, and the red mist starts to sort of coalesce onto the ground as sort of just, like, red puddles everywhere, and you see something pretty awful. You look out into the street and you see many, many people lying there dead on the floor. Their eyes are blacked out and they look like their um, bodies have become emaciated. Aw, shit. That is... I don't know what movie to act as right now. <laughs> it's okay. This has never happened in a movie before. Hasn't it? Uh, no, almost certainly it has. I take some pictures of it and send it to Peyton. Uh, so, but the area, the area is clear in front of us, so let's go look at... And they're definitely, like, dead, dead. There's no pulse, no breathing. Yeah, like I said, this like, whole thing was to, distract, was to distract the horde long enough for y'all to go set off that nuke up there. Okay, so yeah, so I'd, I'd say as soon as soon as you um, do that and you clear this um, area and see all these dead bodies, some of the nearby vampires notice and they move from the area near the pyramid to come down where Thad is sort of standing. They are now skittering around amongst the dead bodies trying to figure out how the gas has coalesced. Uh, they have not seen you yet, Thad, but they will very shortly. <laughs> Shall, All right, well, I'll, let the, I'll, I'll let the other two go let's first. Let's go, let's go. Okay. Wait, yep, we're uh, making our way to the pyramids. The two of you run across the sand and you find a nice dune to hide behind. And in front of you is the Great Pyramid of Giza and the nearby Sphinx. And you guys have got the tactical nuke in your possession. Are you going to nuke one of the seven wonders of the world? Yeah. Well, I mean, the vampires continue to flow into it and magic bugs seem to come out of it. I will, uh, if, which would you rather for me to give this a much closer look? Observation, because I'm looking, or focus, because it's magic? I'd say observation. Ah! Well then. Damn. Let that be a natural 20 for all of us. Okay, so it looks like on top of the pyramid, one of the queens is standing. You see nearby several other queens are also guiding their forces up to the pyramid. A few of the other um, vampires are sort of scuttling down into the west of the town to start grabbing bodies um, and bringing them towards the pyramid. And they appear to be preparing for something. And as you say that, the ground shakes again. I do, they do see, they're, uh, Rose, I'm not hugely attached to the wonders of the world as I'm to understand they're called. Uh, are, would this, is this object of in particular importance to people? Uh, not to me, but to people generally, yes. But also, there's so many vampire queens, and... That is a lot of them, though. It looks like a lot of vampire queens. I mean, Rose doesn't care. There's, like, just a massive, crawling, horrible thing. Uh, no. uh, I say we nuke it. There probably will be repercussions. Millard pulls out a, pulls out this magic abacus and starts tallying it across, doing costs <laughs> per, per gamma agent equipped with vampire loadout. Have times X vampires with a multiplier for vampire queens plus minus the danger risk ratio of what ritual they're trying to perform based on the. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah, we should probably just nuke the thing. Let's do it. So we're going to get closer, I suppose, because it seems suitcasey, or is this a shoulder? No, no, this is, a, this is like an RPG. Oh, so you well, then. From here. Then, uh, Agent Gibson, Gibsonton, I believe accounting will sign completely off on this. I believe that we should leave it in operations, which would be your hands. Sounds great. 
and hands the tactical nuke over to the person who can shoot things. <laughs> it seems smarter than me doing it. Yeah, that's my, this is my realm. <laughs> I'm going to yep. try to blow up a pyramid. Roll for agility. 16. I'm going to say you aim this tactical nuke. Uh, it is laser guided. Uh, so you aim the laser at the pyramid. And I'm going to say roll for luck as well. Oh. <laughs> Oh, a three. So the laser, as it aims at the pyramid, it reflects off of some of the vampire's carapaces, and they notice it. A horde of them starts to plow towards you. But at the very last moment, you fire the nuke, and the nuke flies out of the RPG and towards the pyramid. The pyramid then explodes. We've just heard through that there is there has been a large explosion. Uh, it is confirmed that this explosion is nuclear in nature. Definitely a nuclear attack, um, although it, it is a, a a small nuclear device. Although it appears that the pyramids have been destroyed. Um, I, I repeat the the, the pyramids of Giza uh, have been destroyed in what appears to be a terrorist attack. Uh, further reports will be given to you as we get them. This is quite a small tactical nuke, one of the smallest ones that there actually is. It's not the size of the nuke, it's the ability for it to displace the ocean into a city a city catastrophizing tidal wave. Yeah, pretty much. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's right. Luckily for you guys, because this is on the pyramid, there aren't that many casualties from this. I'm actually using the nuke map to work this out. Based on your magical abacus work, you pretty much work out about 2,000 people are going to get blown up by this, but a heck of a lot more um, vampires are going to get blown up too, so it kind of works itself out in the math. I mean, the vampires are going to each eat one person. We saved the world tomorrow. This is true. <laughs> when you think about it, like, this is very, from a very utilitarian point of view. That's what I'm here for, running them spreadsheets. The air blast kicks up sand, uh, and you guys, like, shield your eyes as it hits you. Uh, and you see this sort of micro mushroom cloud. And the pyramid is now gone, and there are, like, dead vampires strewn all across the sand nearby. And then the ground shakes again. Oh, it's still doing that. That's not good. This time the ground shakes far more dramatically. The sand beneath you starts to shift. Once again, a small nuclear device has been detonated now. Okay, we have reports confirmed from Reuters of an, an earthquake now across the Giza Plateau. Um, the, the, the scale of this earthquake and, and the, the damage caused uh, has not yet been reported, but following a nuclear attack, I, I, can, only, I can only guess at the, the devastation that this must have caused. Uh, our thoughts here at the BBC go out to the... Okay, we have reports now uh, that the two other pyramids nearby have also collapsed. At this point, I'm going to move over to um, Clad, who is nearby um, on the west-hand side of the city. Uh, you have felt the heat from the nuke behind you, and the wind has knocked you off your feet, and the vampires that were standing in front of you now panic and then move towards the bright uh, mushroom cloud. So you are now on your own there. Do you want to go and meet up with the other two? So, um, but am I seeing the, uh, am I seeing the sand like kind of go in though? Like, is, am I seeing that? Uh, you're hit, feeling the ground rumble. You're see because this you're in the more built up area where there's concrete and stuff. You're seeing concrete starting to sort of crack and shift underneath you. It feels like an earthquake. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So there's an earthquake. There's something coming from. Under the ground, I wanted it to be more of a quicksand thing, but I'm not, so I can't Princess Bride this. 
Uh, I'm trying to think. Hold on, Paul's writing me a note of a movie that he thinks I should uh, try to riff on. Let's see what it is. What if it just says "fuck you"? That'd be so funny. Okay. So I am going to uh, reach into my bag. I'm going to take off the Moses outfit. I put on a cowboy hat, mm -hmm. a wife beater, and a cut-off flannel shirt, and I'm going to embody Kevin Bacon from the movie Tremors. Hey! Perfect. <laughs> That's amazing. What a perfect decision. Roll for creativity. I don't know. I feel like that was pretty creative of me already. 16. <laughs> you are now Kevin Bacon. And I realize, like, you know, that, like, so this thing under the ground... Um, it is, it is, it is going on. So I have my two guns staff, um, and I, you know, I'm sure that I have other gamma things. I have like, or, or like, you know, other explosives. So what I yeah. want to do is take my two guns that I've taped together and I want to take all the explosives I have on me and tape them to the gun. And then I want to like use them as in a, as a an explosive device to, Try to wherever I see the center of the earthquake happening, I want to use it to like throw it in there and uh, start start screaming to chase me. Okay, could you please uh, roll for agility? I got an eight. <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> All right, uh, you grab your weapons, you tie them together, you create this sort of explosive device, and then. You throw it into one of the cracks that is forming beneath you, and it falls down below, and then you hear a loud explosion, followed by an ear-shattering roar from beneath the ground. From above, you hear the sound of a helicopter nearby. Millard looks at Rose and thinks, well, we maybe should have saved the nuke. <laughs> the helicopter lands near you, Thad, and out steps Peyton Steele, and he goes, come with me if you want to live. Um, I go, excuse me, I'm doing Tremors right now. That's, ter that's Terminator. Um, yeah, I mean, he says it in a few other movies, but, like, I just really, pre you know that I am, I'm, I'm method, and I really, it helps me if you don't break character, of my, my character. All right, then. Get to the chopper. <laughs> Once again, okay, have you seen a fucking movie that Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know what, I'll, when we get back to the base, we're going to have a movie night, and I get in the... Agent Gibson said, one of the things that I just know in my heart is that while we're doing this, important work is happening with all of our field teams <laughs> all over Cairo. I believe in this organization. They are all scrambling right now. <laughs> but, but yeah, I get, I get in the, uh, I get in the, ch I get in the chopper. Cool. Uh, you get in the chopper. The chopper then heads over to Rose and Millard, and then it lands next to you, and then Peyton motions to get you into the helicopter. <laughs> we do it much faster. <laughs> and far more efficiently. Oh, yeah, I'm well, I do. I mean... Do either of you want to quote a movie whilst you're at it? Is Rose that, is that something that you'd like to do? Rose is very no-nonsense. Millard's already buckled in. Millard doesn't have time for human movies. No, no, he's a big fa he's a big fan of Jurassic Park, and he like does have trouble getting his seatbelt together, but he doesn't make a big deal out of it. Uh, <laughs> the helicopter takes off, and and you watch as the desert below you starts to shift, and the sand starts to fall down into cracks below. You watch as the other pyramids around the area start to shift and break and fall apart. Oh, so that was just going to happen. Yeah, see, see, we at least took out some that. fucking vampires with our pyramid destruction. Thad, you have a massive headache all of a sudden with your big, bulbous, gross alien head. Uh, could you roll for focus for me? I got an eight. You find yourself suddenly in an ancient Egyptian temple. You look down and your hands are a sort of weird blue color. You have worshippers all around you. They are sort of like doing that thing that you saw earlier um, when you were in the temple. And you are using a machine. You are using the uh, system of Osiris to form these large stone pyramids above what looks like some sort of enormous scarab beetle creature with multiple legs and like thousands of eyes looking up at you. Mm. You use this little sistrum thing to cause these giant pyramids, which are actually more like spikes, to land down on top of this thing and they trap it beneath the sand and then you cause the sand to pour in on it. That's fucking metal. It is, isn't it? That's a way cool. So art. did we release this thing? I guess we kind of did bad by killing the mummy. What? Shit, Maybe was the mummy alien not bad? I'm sorry. What are you talking about? <laughs> We're still in the helicopter. You just okay, stared okay. out of the window yeah, and then staring. started talking. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are, in fact, Imhotep, an alien who came to Earth 
to stop the vampires spreading from different planets. You put the vampire empress underneath the sands and trapped her there with pyramids to stop her from growing and spreading her influence. But now she's free and she's about to destroy the world. Bad, hey. bad, bad, focus. What are we doing? Oh, um, two things. First, <laughs> I have a great idea for a movie. Please remind nope, me to call nope, my. Nope, nope, please sec- remind me to call sec- me my call my agent after this mission is done. Second, we may have caused all of this by killing the dude down in that tome and then taking his little musical instrument. Um, he actually may have been a good guy that we wackily killed with a uh, with you know like kind of a. No, it was stick. very, very wily coyote. Yeah, that was, it was a lot very of fun. Funny. And we didn't. It was none yeah. of our stuff. Not a lot of people great. give credit to modern day comedy with like Looney Tunes. So but can it's we really back up to the, a lot of stuff? Can we back up to the Imhotep thing? Oh yeah, whatever. Imhotep is actually like a good alien that came here to like stop aliens and shit like that. And then this, you know, I pull up like the broken instrument. I was like, this was used to put the pyramids on top of the vampire queen to hold her in. And that big giant bug ass thing, I guess, is like her or some shit. But yeah, like mm-hmm. we kind of just doomed the world. Um, but anyways, this would make for a fucking tight movie. Just imagine the imagery of like pyramids dropping, and that's like the opening but, well, scene of it. You, and then you, you said fast we, forward. We said we doomed doomed the world. Stop! Stop talking about like. Can we can we fix the system? But what I'm talking about is the pyramid. Th- that's just gonna look good. Can we fix the system? If we don't save the world, there will be no movie. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't fucking know. I'm not a band nerd, all right? And then I just like throw the, I throw it on the ground at you. <laughs> I'm like, you fucking do whatever you want. I don't know how to goddamn tune that thing, all right? You've all heard my albums. They're all auto-tuned, and I did not sing them. As you guys argue and Peyton drives the helicopter, can you please all roll for observation? 16. I got a 14. 7. No, you got a natu- I have you, sand in my eyes again. You got again. a natural yeah, 1. You, you've still got sand in your eyes. You can barely see anything. That's terrible. You look down and you see the vampire empress, the queen of all queens, the destroyer of worlds who has moved to this planet millennia ago to wipe out everything on the planet. She crawls out of the sand and she is about the size of a good few city blocks. I sure hope it's not something that we'll be talking about for years to come, who will probably only be seen once. The screaming of this creature is deafening, and then it turns around and it starts to march on the city. Below it, you see its tentacles reaching down and grabbing corpses from the ground and bringing them up to its mouth, almost automatically, as if it doesn't care about them. And out of the corner of your eye, you see an airship that is dangerously close to your helicopter. Ah. This airship then immediately collides with the helicopter and you feel yourselves all spinning out of control downwards towards the sand below. Oh no! And that is where we're going to end this episode. What will, what will befall our morally ambiguous heroes? <laughs> Information from any terrorist groups. No one is stepping forward to claim responsibility for these heinous attacks. I'm sorry. What is this? No, I'm sorry. This is this is serious. We have photographic evidence of some kind of giant insect. Uh, is is the only way that I can describe this with with many many arms and and many eyes. This, this, a, a giant insect a, about the size of a few city blocks. You can't, you can't expect me to, to say this. It's happening. Okay. Um, I repeat, uh, a large insect has emerged uh, from the ground with hundreds of with hundreds of smaller creatures emerging from its back. Uh, and it's headed straight for the city. Uh, it's headed straight for Cairo. Um, in all my years on the night shift, I, I, I have never had to deliver a story quite this strange. We now return you to Marching in the Marshes. We will give you more information as the story develops. This has been Richard White for the BBC.
The Omen podcast is powered by Ellipsis RPG, the accessible donationware rule set. Now available on itch.io. If you like what you're hearing, please rate us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. You can tweet to us at the hashtag OmenCast, that's O-M-E-N cast, and who knows, you might get a special mention in one of the episodes from us. Thank you for listening, and remember, stay vigilant. You never know what's out there. Hey there. The show you just listened to is a member of the Necropodicon Podcast Network. Head over to necropodicon.com to find tons of other shows you'll love. While you're there, check out the cast and crew profiles and fan art galleries.